Hey guys, this is Aaron. I want to take a look today at something I saw come up on our forum a couple times, and that was creating angled or tapered table legs. So I have a little table here. I have some table legs. They're pretty boring. They're just, you can see there's push-pulled squares. Um, so I'm going to go in here and look at some different options of how I could actually make some tapered legs here. I'm going to go ahead and right click and hide my tabletop. That's a separate component. And these are all just exploded geometry. In the real model, I'd of course want to group this together, but for the example I'm giving here, I'm going to just work with the raw geometry. So the first and simplest solution to creating a tapered table leg would be to select the geometry of one end, in this case the bottom end, and use the scale command. When I hit scale, I get all my, my corners come up there and I can grab a corner and I can drag it to resize. If I grab one of these opposite corners and hit option, I'll scale around the middle rather than the opposite end and I can real quickly, real easily, create a simple tapered leg. And that's tapered around the middle so it goes straight down, uh, small on the top, small on the bottom, big on the top. So that is obviously the simplest solution. All these, all these are based on squares too and I'm not uh, looking at circular legs uh, or tools I'd use for that be a little different of course. So this is good but what if I want a little more detail? Maybe I want a, a section up here where it doesn't taper and then it starts to taper and then maybe it flares out again for the foot, something like that. What I can do is I can break this leg into multiple pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the four lines that make up the top and I'm going to use move with the option key to slide this down. I'm going to come down a couple inches here and then I'm going to come down again, maybe down that's enough space for my foot and uh, I'm going to have a transition from a square foot up so I'm going to do it again selecting those four lines option and copying up. Alright so now that I have that I'm going to use this second set so here I have a piece that's not going to get tapered and uh, with this piece right here again I'm going to scale the exact same thing I did before I hover over corner I'm going to hold down the option or control key the modifier key to scale about the center and I'm going to drag that in look what happens. So in that case real quick easy I have a square end up here maybe that's to connect to the top of the table and it flares back out for the foot. So just a quick and easy way to do that um, just add some lines again every time I put a line onto a surface it's going to break that surface so when I scale it's only going to resize the piece of geometry that is between that line and the line above. So another option there so those are pretty easy ways to do that with scale. Scaling is always going to give me straight lines. It's not going to give me curves in this taper. So that is one of the questions I saw a couple times is how do I get, uh, you know, like I want to round this out a little bit. I'm going to do that with arc. I'm going to grab an arc. And I'm going to start about here. And I'm going to take it down to uh, right about there. I'm just going to have it bulge in just a little bit like that. And then maybe I'll do the same thing. I'll have a little bit of a foot, something like that. So simple solution here, of course, is to push pull through. When you push pull, you get that cut on one side. And maybe that's good. Maybe I actually want that, just that simple face on one side. Um, odds are good that I want to do it on at least two sides, though. So I'm going to undo that. To get that this uh, arc to wrap around two sides, I'm going to use follow me, of course. So I can grab follow me, grab this surface, and then push it, turn, and drag it across both sides. But the more accurate way to do it, of course, is to pre-select my path. So I'm going to select these two lines right here on the bottom. Then I'm going to choose Follow Me and pick this piece that I want to carve out. A lot of times when we use Follow Me, we use it to add geometry. In this case, by sweeping this through an existing geometry, it's actually going to subtract from that geometry. So I had a little, little extra line there. I can just delete that. But you can see how that makes, it cuts in on both sides. So that's a real, again, I could probably get a little more fancy with my foot down here, but this looks pretty good. Again, and that's on the corner, it's on the outside corner of the table. That may be sufficient. Now, what happens if I want to actually put an arc like that, but I want it to go all the way around? I'm going to start just like I did before with an arc. I pick a spot right up here on the top I want to come down to. I'm going to come down about there, have my bulge come in like that. And then uh, maybe something for a foot, something like, actually, you know what, let's do this. Let's grab another arc and have the foot actually come out and be rounded like that. So I want to take that and have it go all the way around. 
So what I could do, what I my my instinct would be to, I'm just gonna double click on the bottom to pre-select a path for my uh, follow me. Then I'm gonna hit follow me and I'm gonna pick this right here. Now this is a good start, but look, stuff gets weird. First off, it turned my whole leg inside out and it left some weird geometry hanging out here. Um, kind of a weird thing happened there. So I'm gonna undo to undo that. The issue is that we're starting that follow me basically in a spot that stops existing by the time you get all the way around. See that? Because I'm out, out here on the edge. So how I can, what I can do to change this, I can select this geometry and I'm gonna use the move command. I'm gonna move it, click here, I'm gonna hit the modifier key, option or control, to just drag that straight over. Here, let's turn on, let's turn on x-ray so you can see exactly what's happening. Drag that straight over and drop it in the middle. Then I can use erase to get rid of these two arcs. Now what I wanna do is, same thing I did before, pre-select my path, hit follow me, then pick this shape and let it carve out all the way around this square. Um, problem is, I have to be able to pick that geometry. So what I'm gonna do temporarily is just delete this top. And I'm gonna do this while peeking inside from the bottom. I'm gonna double click on the bottom, then I'm gonna hit follow me, and from this open top, I'm gonna to pick the piece I want to pass around there, and there we go. So that actually cut on all four sides. I can go ahead and close this back up if I want, and I can unhide my tabletop, and there we go, there's some, some options. That is an awkward looking table in an awesome way, but uh, there's a couple options for making tapered table legs from rectangles inside a SketchUp. Thank you.